What's up, everybody? Welcome to the American Peloton. We got a really special episode for episode five. We've got our first guest ever on the podcast. We've got Gabe Mendez from the NCL Miami Knights. We've talked a lot about NCL. And, uh, of course, Ben and I were both watching as all the as all the rosters are being announced. And Ben saw the announcement of Gabe and said... I know that dude. I think we could actually like figure out what's going on. We should talk to him. So here he is. Gabe, thanks for coming on. A little background on Gabe. I've known Gabe since like middle school. <laughs> like I think I was a sophomore in high school and Gabe might have been in like seventh or eighth grade and we were like racing mountain bikes and Gabe was beating me then when I had hit puberty already. And <laughs> now um just watching the growth. We raced like Nike together a little bit, kind of focused more on the road. Um, you were on that Fraser junior development team, which put out a lot of really strong kids back um, in the 2010s. Then um, you kind of moved on later, sort of let's go from, you know, graduating out of juniors to where you are now. First off, thank you guys uh, a ton for having me on the podcast. Always a, an honor to yeah. the guest for something like that. But yeah, coming out of out of juniors, my last year on juniors, I was uh, on the Hinkapi development team. Um, and so I got to get some good exposure there. Uh, went with the U.S. national team for uh, a little trip during the summer. And it ended up landing me a spot with the uh, foundation CCB uh, continental team, continental and then domestic elite, where I got to race all over the U.S., all over Europe doing all the all the big stuff some of the crits here too i spent all of my u23 years there through covid all that kind of stuff and then once i aged out of that um it was right after covid i had some bad luck but emil abraham of the ngc elite team actually the team in georgia uh gave me a gave me a little a helping hand and i got to race with them for all of 2022 and then after that year i had a, a decent result to cap off the the year in tobago the tour of tobago and that got me noticed by some of the higher ups um, and some of my connections with the NCL, the National Cycling League. And so cool. I was a late addition to one of the rosters. Yeah, but that's where I am now. The South American connection is something we've talked about on this podcast. It seems like there's a strong South American, Central American connection with the uh, the NCL. I was going to save this for later, but uh, do you know, like, are there going to be teams from, like, the kind of teams you were racing in Tobago? Are they going to be coming up for any of the NCL races? I'm not sure if the if the kind of teams that we race down there are going to be coming up. Um, I know that it's going to be 10 teams invited uh, with six-man rosters, and you can have two substitutes. Um, so kind of an eight-man roster, only six men on the road. It's going to be the two NCL teams and then six other, I mean, eight other invite teams. But I'm not sure. I'm not in the know of what teams those are going to be. Cool. Uh, yeah, we've speculated that, like, just from all the stuff we've been seeing, like, it might be some some South American or Central American, like, UCI Pro Conti kind of level teams filling that out. Be, yeah. I know that we, uh, they're, the hard part, not the hard part, um, but the challenge for some of the U.S. teams is that you do have to have uh, men and women on your team uh, or at least like be able to partner with a team so I know that is an option uh, if your team only has men and you find another team that only has women and you guys can partner um, I do believe that's going to be sort of in the in the cards for 2023 yeah. so we could see like a um, 2024 pairing with like a CS Velo or something and they would be like an NCL team together scoring points together kind of thing yeah yeah i obviously i don't i don't know those kind of things but yeah i've heard i've heard the rumblings right not those specifically but something yeah. like that could yeah. could happen cool i'm gonna circle back to the like super specifics on the ncl in a minute going through like your your racing history so I, you definitely don't recognize me but we did race together in 2022 uh at you got third at the uh the hilly stage of um uh toward north georgia the stage the like circuit race that finishes on that like one or two minute climb yeah uh, yeah, yeah. don't worry about where i finished there but i was there <laughs> i no, i was gonna say i i don't know that i had met you personally before but the name jonathan crane i was like i've definitely seen that before i was racing fraser a ton so you were like one of the the like nameless rabble of fraser kids that were like yeah. just undroppable <laughs> on the junior gears back then yeah, the, it was the super junior era. Yeah, yeah, the 
there was <laughs> that was like a super junior of Georgia era. It was a thing where there were all these really strong juniors, and y'all were all on. That was like when they were still making everyone do junior gears. I guess they just quit doing that. It was all, like always a thing that like no one could drop y'all because you were super strong, but also you couldn't like take really hard pulls, like especially if it was like a false flat downhill. So yeah, it was like yeah. it like how do you how do you race against that? It was <laughs> it was yeah. an unwinnable situation. But you guys had a ton of just strong take riders. Sprint. Yeah. Yeah, we had to make the sprint really long so that you would just run out of gears. Yeah. That was like the only RPM way. Last like 10 minutes. Yeah, it was rough. So uh, NCL just had a big team camp in Arizona. It looked like that was the first time you were like meeting everybody on the team and stuff. How was that? How was the camp? How was the, you guys did some racing too, right? Um, yeah, we, so it was about 10 days in Phoenix, the west side of Phoenix um that we were sort of riding out there doing a lot of media content all that stuff it was the first time i had met most of my teammates um i think the only person that i knew previously was uh frank travieso after that we did we drove down to tucson for the tucson bicycle classic it was just a three-day stage race with a, a prologue time trial a road race and then a circuit race uh so that was sort of the test of team chemistry y'all had some pretty decent results at tucson didn't you um <laughs> saw some top threes and wins yeah we um so our women's team got the they got the win on day two in the road race uh, with Heidi Praderas I still don't know how to pronounce that for sure um <laughs> but yeah Heidi Heidi had a great sprint to win the women's road race um and we ended up we were second and fifth I think in the uh in the road race and then second and third in the uh in the circuit race, Alfredo Rodriguez, like I said, our fast man, he uh, he was second both days, and then Clever was fifth on the second day, and uh, Brian Gomez was third on the the third day. Nice. nice. I also saw. I, I have to bring this up because this is someone like we were doing some preseason podcasts, and we were kind of saying yeah. like who's who's like underrated. <laughs> I don't know how to say her last name. Cook White on your team. Uh, yeah. I'm a big cyclocross guy, so I was following her through the cyclocross season and knew she was, you know, having good results in Europe and stuff. But she was like top ten in one of those road races, also. So yeah. I'm always going to point out the things that I was correct about. I'm going <laughs> to circle back and say I called that out earlier. And yeah. Glad to see she was having results. Yeah, you saw her pre. Um. Yeah, she was she was over there in Europe doing. A heck of a preseason, I guess. Yeah, I didn't really. I am not, you know, I'm not super in the in on the on the cycling world. But uh, I met Taylor, and uh, I remember we did like some some trainer tests and all that. And she said she felt awful on uh, on one of the things. But you know, it's it's an indoor trainer. So, uh, but it was funny the way that she turned around from that, and then she went top ten on the time trial, which was purely. Uh, purely <laughs> right. power. It's a power and test. So, yeah, yeah. We were like, "Wow, you really, uh, really turned that one around on us." Yeah, she absolutely smashed. It. Yeah, riding the trainer is like its own weird skill. You know, sometimes that yeah. can go sideways for a variety of reasons. I do want to circle back to that as well. That's a whole like aspect of this team I'm interested in. But you mentioned uh, your fast man. I, I'm wondering, like, what. Um, it sounds like you've got some roles like laid out already for the year. So Clever Martinez, like he's kind of going to be more of a wild card and then Rodriguez is going to be the sprinter or is that going to kind of vary, you know, depends who's who's going hot that moment or do you have those those roles defined already? I think a lot of it's going to be kind of whoever's feeling hot in the race. I, you know, obviously I can't I can't give away too much, but right. uh, on paper, I want to say Alfredo is probably our in a in a flat out flat drag race alfredo is probably our fast man but like I, we have a few we have a few sprinters on the team um that can that can that's make it probably happen. good yeah that yeah. that like <laughs> dovetails into something i definitely wanted to talk about which was <laughs> so i mean you guys you did tucson bicycle classic you're doing yeah. a lot of other like non-ncl races this season but yeah, yeah. the ncl races themselves are like going to be a points-based format right so yes yeah, I can tell you all about the all about the NCL points racing, and that's actually tell us all about it. Yes, please uh, do. Oh. <laughs> well, uh, actually, having multiple sprinters on the team is uh, hopefully going to really play into 
our favor um, because of the way that the point system is, uh, especially track racers. We have a lot of track racers on our team. And essentially what the NCL, the NCL point system is, it's a little bit similar to a, uh, like a track, a track points based system. Um, nice. But the, the way that that system is going to work, if do you want me to go into it now or. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. this yeah. is, we've speculated about it a lot on this podcast, yeah. so it would be great to have someone just, who actually knows just give the real information. Yeah, yeah. Um, so obviously this is all stuff that's, I'm not sure if it's been released to the public or it will be released to the public uh, but i know i am allowed to speak on uh speak on it it'll become public knowledge so there won't be any like questions about it, it won't be vague for the time of the first race um but it's cool. gonna be a 30 minute or i mean a 30 lap race uh and the circuit is going to be short uh obviously it's going to be crit style i am not sure exactly how technical they're going to be all that kind of stuff but every lap all of the 30 laps there will be points available on the line and it's going to be three, two, and one for first, second, and third. Um, and that's every lap, except the last lap wow. is going to be triple points. Um, and so okay. it's going to be nine, six, and three on the line for the last lap. So then the podium after the race, <laughs> will there be a podium that's like for the first person across the line on the last lap and then the points or like the points is it? No, it's going to be, there will not be um, an individual um prize for it i don't believe as far as i'm aware and not only will there not be um much emphasis on individual it will also be a combination of the men's and women races right yeah that's another reason i brought up taylor and like it seemed like you guys were more like the men's and women's teams at camp were like a little bit more integrated even than a lot of the teams that do have men's and women's you know they're not necessarily doing camps in the same place at the same time all the time but i guess you guys you're not going to be on course at the same time but uh your your races do affect each other so you're going to be like a little bit more together than a lot of the like men's and women's programs out there Oh yeah, absolutely. That's a that's a huge part of the uh, the NCL as uh, an organization is equal representation, equal all that kind of stuff um, for the women in the sport. And so all the things that we do, like we are we are one team. It's not like a men's and women's team. It it is in a literal sense, but we are the Miami Knights. There are sixteen of us, and there just happens to be eight men and eight women for the different races. Cool. So right. that format, all of the laps are going to be equally weighted. There's no, so the points, like if uh, let's say Frank Travieso goes on a breakaway and he's out there alone for half the race and scoops up all of those three point uh, totals, those yeah. don't go into a, a Travieso pile. And that's sort of like his, they're going into the Miami Knights pile. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Cool. Okay. Interesting. That's a, so it is, I, I had speculated that it was going to be more like uh, the ZRL. A lot of people on this, so I started doing YouTube like during the lockdown yeah. when I didn't have anything else better to do. I was actually, I was supposed to be racing Birmingham Hammerfest the day everything shut down. Okay. So I was like, had all this fitness and just nothing to do. So people yeah. are, who watch this are very familiar with Zwift. And on Zwift, the ZRL races are kind of like similar. There's no individual winner. It's all, all the points go into a team bucket. So for everybody watching who's looking, who's like, I've never raced track, and I'm like looking for something to grab onto. Yeah. It's kind of like ZRL. Okay. I was going to, yeah, but, thank you for explaining the ZRL, because I, I had not heard of that before. So you, you're too busy racing real bike races. Yeah. And, like, uh, yeah, I'm too busy talking to worry about Zwift. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's nerd stuff that I still get into, most, mostly because I keep getting hurt. If I can... I'll race left less Zwift if I can stop popping yeah. my shoulders out of joint and stuff. But for the time being, I'm I'm in here racing. Cool. Well, that that format sounds interesting. So then I guess that's going to be like a totally different like strategy for you guys going into each of those races versus like a normal race where you're. Are you going to try and say like you know you got multiple sprinters, which makes sense with this format? Are you going to say like sprinter one, you go for points on even number laps and sprint or two you go on odd number laps or like are you gonna get that granular with it or are y'all gonna do it on the fly i'm not fully i'm not fully sure right now that's gonna be up to our uh, up to our coach to kind of instruct us on based on the how everybody comes into the race the race format like the course that kind of stuff right um, but i mean it's it's not impossible that that kind of thing happens um and it's definitely going to be a whole different type of racing uh, if just because 
the the very first lap is just as important as the second to last lap. It's you know it's the same amount of points on the line. So right out of the gun, uh, it'll be it'll be full gas. As far as I from from my experience, like some of my some of my friends and mentors who have done other like races that are similar to that sort of fashion, it's straight off of the start line. So yeah, it should be a lot more evenly paced than like yeah a lot of the longer crits you get the like you know first five ten laps are really really fast while everybody's trying to get position and then it settles down in the middle and then it heats back up but yeah there's like an hour where you don't really do anything you know right (laughs) exactly (laughs) yeah there's an hour where you just try to stay like 20th wheel yeah that's all you're focused Uh, on well that's something that the that the founders of the ncl and the people who are, you know, organizing this kind of stuff wanted to make was a type of racing that you could have up on the TV and not have to watch every minute of. Because, you know, you look up, uh, take Athens Twilight, for example, a big group lapped up on the field. Um, yeah. And if you hadn't been watching the whole time, you had no idea. And so, you know, somebody mid pack yeah. one. And so this format is something that's a little bit easier that you can look up on a TV and go back to chatting with your friends for 20, 30 minutes and look back up and you can pick back up by looking at the points and you know who's winning. So Right. Yeah. And there's a fresh sprint every time. So Exactly. There's always something to watch. Yeah. yeah. Speaking yeah. of like lapped up groups, um is there something in place like let's say somebody does lap the field, is there going to be like does it become neutralized and it just starts back over or is there okay, that person lapped the field so they're getting 3 points and the whole field's just like it's neutralized at that point. Like what is, what's the kind of program for lap fields? Yeah. The last time that, um, that I was told about it, if you lapped the field, you would get a certain bonus amount of points. And then you get like that. Your team gets those points and then everybody's on the same lap. Um, Got so it. that, that implements a new strategy of, do you want to lap up or do you want to stay off the front? That kind right. of stuff. And then, uh, so dropped riders will be pulled if you are not part of the main pack. So if you get lapped by a breakaway and you're one or two riders off the back of the um, the peloton, which is defined by the largest group on the road, then you will be pulled. That's Good. that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, I feel like every crit should be pulling lapped riders pretty much. So yeah, yeah, the it, issue it gets is too messy when there are like five different groups on the road because I can only imagine um how these races are going to look after 25 laps of sprinting every single lap i'm sure they're going to get blown apart right. yeah uh, for sure right that's to be seen uh in miami so yeah yeah that that um we, we've talked extensively on this uh youtube channel about that athens twilight race last year i was i was there watching it and couldn't figure out what was going on like ha- had to go like watch the stream later to know like who was yeah. lapped and who wasn't like that was just a crazy race it's yeah. chaos it would be it's a lot cleaner for sure to sit to be able to just like look at the points and say okay like ty magner lapped up and that was five more points done yeah. like i don't have to think about that anymore because exactly. i can see it reflected in the points total already so with that in mind, it will get complicated like for you guys on the road to kind of know what's going on from a point standpoint. Do you think you're going to have radios? Like is is the team director going to be in your ear saying like letting you know who got points or do you know if there's going to be a mechanism for that? There will be a mechanism for uh, riders and spectators to know how many points everybody has. I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say specifics on all that. Um, okay. We, yeah. Yeah. Um, but there will be a way for everybody to know how many points people have. And then there is debate about radios because the thing is radios are great for like road races and all that kind of stuff. But if you take, like if you were at Athens twilight, you know how loud it can get when there are some spectators out. And so if you have a radio, but you can't hear it, what's the point, you know? Um, right. So there's a little bit of discussion about that right now. My vote would be to give you guys radios just because I know the alternative would be some kind of display. And I know for me, like personally, like in races like Athens, there are times where it's like I can't even find the lap counter. So I can't imagine if there was like a full leaderboard I'm trying to find somewhere, like especially like the Athens course they've been using where 
the lap counter is at the top of the hill. So like the most blown that you are every lap is where you need to like check and see how many laps you've got left. Well, and not only, um, not only for the laps, but, um, there will also be a system for substituting your riders in and out during the race. Oh, oh. wow. Okay. I, that's okay, something okay. I didn't, I thought that. the substitution thing was just like, it's going to be like hockey style. You're saying where they, you can like yeah. pull in the pit and rather than a free lap, you're, you're trading yeah. a rider like yeah. lines on a hockey team. Okay. That's a, oh, that's so a pretty big scoop. <laughs> It's almost going to be like an F1 style pit where like each team has a uh, team has a designated tent area. Yeah, you will you will essentially be told one lap. You'll be notified that you are being pulled out. And then another right like when you pull in the pit, another rider will be released out of the pit. Wow. OK, that's a that's, that's a awesome. huge. We had just been glossing over. I thought we would we had like pulled apart all the NCL stuff that we had seen yeah. too much and we had gotten too nerdy on it. But we had glossed over that. I think what I thought that meant was just that there will be six riders in the race and substitution just meant like you're not fielding the same six rider lineup at each race. You could, no. but you're saying within a race, you can make substitutions. Yeah. That's going to so, be a, uh, a huge strategic. Yeah. Thing. For example, if, uh, if your sprinter missed the breakaway and you want the sprinter breakaway, um, up to five laps to go, you could take one rider, you could take the riders out and then, put your sprinter up front whoa okay whoa. crazy that's yeah. insane yeah that re- <laughs> that it's... adds a whole new we yeah, yeah we... have to like mull that over i can't even we wrap my head around that relations right now. all that kind of stuff of the riders kind of trying to figure out how to do it and it is it is going to make some for exciting racing <laughs> how did for that sure. go was it that chaotic awesome. <laughs> it it really for riders it didn't end up being that chaotic it's pretty easy to figure out i mean you just you do what somebody tells you to do, um, and then you're right. all good. As long as the team works well together and um, and everybody is pretty like competent in their, their racing, like it works pretty smooth. So, but yeah, that's gonna be that's gonna be one of the big hurdles for the league is uh, riders figuring out how to get that super smooth and working through. Yeah, that's gonna be like a whole different. You know, like in cross, you got to learn to mount and remount. And in like track, you got to learn like the Madison arm sling. It's going to be like in CL, you got to learn the like yeah. F1 pit exchange thing. Yeah. Even just like matching the pace of the field coming out of the pit. Because like sometimes in our, uh, sometimes a rider would go out too slow and they would get sort of like the, the pack would start moving up on them. But it's also completely possible that you come out of the pit going way faster than the peloton. And then you have to like hit the brakes, try to try to mold back in there. It's going to take me, I'm going to have to like come back to what the potential implications of that could be. Cause I'm going to have to like think through that. That's a wrinkle that I've not even considered yeah. possible. That's, yeah. that's like breaking the bike race brain, right? Where yeah. it's like, <laughs> it's like so it's, non-traditional. And so, yeah, this obviously I'm not like, this is in all the details. There are all sorts of specifics that are figured out and they're going to be released by the time of the first race. So, you know, if, if anybody has questions, it's not like, oh, the NCL is not, it'll, it'll be known. It'll all be clear um, by the first. Uh, well, I'm um, glad that we're, that we have it here first. I feel like we were the first ones kind of paying attention to like how radically different the NCL could potentially be. So it's fitting yeah. that we have the first real details, uh, you know, pe- People can love that or hate it, but it's definitely interesting. I'm super interested to see like what that, how that racing works for sure. See a lot of people sort of critiquing or hating on the NCL before anything like app actually happens or so focused on like what bike racing is supposed to be and not what it could be. Um, and so like you're, you're saying stuff like subbing in riders and no, like it's time doesn't matter and it's all points and here's how the points work. And it's, it sounds like way more involved and intriguing and interesting and more, way more like strategic than I think a lot of people were thinking where it's, Oh, just ride in a circle and score some points and, and that's kind of train it. Um, there's a lot more involved. It's kind of blown my, uh, like idea of what it was out of the water because, you know, like we saw Legion do the lion's den thing, whatever that was two years ago or whatever. And there's like some elements that are, the same like having geographically based teams and everyone has a race number and stuff like that but 
the, these are all like totally new. Like those were not going to be points races. This substitution system was not part of it. And then th this brings me to another thing I want to loop back to, which is the Wahoo partnership that just got announced. And you said y'all did the fitness tests at camp and stuff. It seems like that's sort of like how they're going to bring to fruition a lot of the other stuff they've been kind of teasing on the data side. I don't know if you can say anything, but it seems like they, they're going to be partnering with Wahoo to like, I don't know, show live data, do something a little bit more with y'all's like actual data than, than other leagues have done. Yeah. Um, so I'm not, I'm not fully at liberty to speak about uh, those kinds of like future plan stuff, but there are some really exciting things um, that the league is looking to do. Like you said, it's not traditional bike racing it's a whole new type of race and that's exactly the point of the league is to try to make like something new and exciting that uh like the american cycling contingent can get behind and like have something to be proud of um because it's you know the the way the traditional like european cycling is broadcasted and shown and all that in the u.s isn't really the way that modern media is moving you know um in terms like short form videos like TikTok, you know, Facebook, uh, Facebook lives or whatever, uh, Instagram yeah. reels, <laughs> yeah. Uh, Twitch. You know, yeah, what everybody or what, what they were telling us, especially was like, you know, the Tour de France is the biggest race in the world, but nobody has time to sit down in the month of June or July and spend 80 hours watching bike racing. Um, so it's, it's a whole new type of thing that you can sit down and be really interactive with um just by watching and in the future there's going to be all sorts of stuff like you said with the wahoo partnership um where it's going to be very um interactive cool okay. yeah. so y'all did you said you did t tests at team camp i assume you did the the 4dp <laughs> test the suffer fest uh or uh, wahoo system is what they're calling it now yeah um, i've been deep I... into all of the the training all of the like Zwift alternatives on this channel. So I, I was deep in the RGT and I've done system, but that's a brutal test. I was going to say, have you done the 40P test? I've done the half Monty, which is like you do the yeah. first half of a 40P and then you do a ramp instead of the 20 minute. Yeah. Because I looked at the 40P and I was like, I'm definitely not doing that. That looks insane. I, uh, I was not chosen to do the 40P test um you got lucky yeah unluckily because you know i i do enjoy like pushing myself and like testing to, like getting a number back and that kind of stuff yeah um, but luckily because i had to watch uh i think it ended up being 16 of my of my teammates or it's eight of my teammates eight of the the denver team doing the 40p test in person and it looked awful it looked like y'all were doing it outside, which is, that's like extra brutal. Oh, it was, it was pretty chilly outside actually. Um, okay. So not that bad. No, it was, if anything, it was cold. Um, not, not hot. It wasn't in the sun or anything like that. Yeah, man. It was, it was awful. It looked horrible. <laughs> yeah. That's a, that's a really brutal test, but I do think I've said this on this channel before. I think those tests that actually take your vo2 into account you get better training zones with that because like if you're really like vo2 heavy person and you take a ramp test you're gonna overcook it and then all your threshold stuff is probably gonna be too hard and your uh your other stuff is gonna be too easy a lot of times so yeah i, um, I think that's a good system pun intended i guess system wahoo system but yeah i'm interested to see if they like do stuff with y'all's numbers. I know everybody would be interested to see like, you know, what kind of 20 minute watt kilo uh, you guys are all doing. Um, yeah, it's, it's great for great for training in that, like, like you said, sometimes your FTP will get set in the wrong place. Um, but it kind of takes into account the way that like, if your strength is a longer effort or if your strength is that one minute power so that you're not skewing all of your training based on like your strength being in one area. It's definitely a more modern approach to FTP. Yeah, and with you guys, the those races being like so sprint sprint heavy, it's going to be good to know like kind of who's got the pop versus who's got the diesel, and then kind of base your strategy accordingly. Yeah, Some yeah, people yeah. might be surprised on what their actual profile is. I think 
a lot of people who have been doing it for a long time tend to just be like, I think I know about what my FTP is and just set it. And then, yeah, you know, maybe they have a monster VO2 that they, you know, they never tested it, so they don't know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you, um, the actual, the Wahoo representative that came to talk with us um, was actually telling us that there's a way that you can just about calculate your actual VO2 number in milligrams per minute per minute or whatever um, oh, using one of the power numbers <laughs> generated from the 40p uh, interesting so, so y'all were using system are you going to do anything with rgt or is that also in the like you don't don't know slash can't say yet camp uh i'm not quite sure about that yet that's something that we're still for, for anyone who doesn't know it's like the zwift type um you know you're you're a digital avatar riding around in a in a digital world but i know during the pandemic some of the high level crits put little rit test races that a lot of the you know this is pre ncl so it would have been usa crits back then but a lot of the usa crits riders did a couple races on there but i would love to see something happening with ncl on there i think that's a a good platform i think the racing on there is better than it is on zwift so yeah, I'd be interested to see what people that are actually good can do with it. Yeah, um, uh, yeah, I, I'm not sure on all that kind of stuff. I've I've tried to stay off of the trainer this year, but uh, given our partnership and the the way that Wahoo is sort of game for it, um, I expect that it's going to become a lot more enjoyable to be on the trainer. So, yeah. I've noticed you've been like riding like up in North Georgia, like the cold, and wet all winter, and I'm just like, I'm not hard enough for that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and it's been it, rough it, it's impressive i uh yeah i don't have a uh trainer quite yet where i'm living mostly so i would have to like go to my parents house to borrow um a trainer like my old ones so instead of that i've just been riding outside a lot and the it's taken a toll on my body on my bike all that so i'm really looking yeah. forward to getting some of this some of this stuff trainer stuff going so that i can just do some trainer rides and, and call it a day you know yeah <laughs> I hear as, you. as someone who's been on the trainer for 15 hours a week recently or 12 hours a week yeah it, definitely having like a really good setup makes it so much easier speaking of like partnerships and stuff um i have two questions the first one being there was a mention of like a sprint qualifier for each race Ooh, um, yeah. i imagine those will be like done on the trainer i i I'm going to assume based off the Wahoo partnership, they're going to be on the, the kicker bikes. Um, what, what sort or, of, uh, it could be on the use? pedals. I think you guys are using the, okay. the, the roller, the, like the thing you s snap your front wheel into. And then with the power pedals, this is probably, we're probably getting too specific here, but we are getting way too specific. Um, I know that we have used the uh, the roller, which um, I don't know how much you guys like know about it, all that kind of stuff. I like I had seen it before, but I had never really processed exactly how it worked. And it's so it's so quick and easy. Um, all of the coaches at uh, team camp were like, oh, my God, this is this is incredible, um, even for like track racing, that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, I did a video on it before before wahoo acknowledged it was a thing but you could see him yeah. at tt world championships last year and so i did a video like you know zapruder film like zooming in on it like what is this trainer but it, it looks yeah. cool it makes a lot of sense for a tt warm-up so anything where yeah. you're just like popping up real quick so like these sprint yeah. things it takes just like a couple a couple minutes to get it off or not a couple minutes like a couple seconds to get it off um super super quick to get it on and off all that stuff um, I'm not sure exactly if we're going to be doing those qualifiers, uh, on trainers or on the road. It might be a mix of both of them. Um, there was chatter about a, uh, about doing a flying lap of the, of the course virtually on a trainer, um, as a, as a, uh, as a qualifier. Um, that sounds like cool. RGT to me. So yeah. You, you um, can like plug the virtual road into that. So maybe they would make a virtual course and you do the flying yeah. lap on there. I didn't, I didn't say anything. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure <laughs> all right. on all that kind of stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, yeah. It's 
they they didn't tell us a whole lot about the qualifiers. They just said it was going to be okay. a thing. Yeah. Do we do we know if they'll be open to the public? Because I think Crane and I are down to drive to Atlanta. Um, will they be open to the public? Like, I think it would be exciting to like just be popped up in a bar, drinking a beer, having bourbon, whatever, and just watching people sprint. And if I had to guess, they're going to be open to the public. Um, oh yeah. Part of the NCL is getting like coverage of it, like getting it uh, on TV, on streams, like getting people to be able to watch, um, getting people who don't even know what bike racing is, who haven't ridden a bike in 20 years um, to come out and watch something and maybe get them into cycling. Um, so, yeah, I, I have to imagine they're going to be open to the public. All right. Also, now I have another uh, question B. So. You mentioned NCL is all about the coverage. Um, yeah. At the team camp, I'm not going to get too granular. There was wording that like there might be invited press at the at the team camps. Um, I don't know if that was real or not, but that's what yeah. I read. Um, will we see like some sort of docu series or like Drive to Survive type thing around the NCL teams? Are you allowed to say that? Is there any sort of that kind of coverage, or is it more about just the, the racing coverage focus. Um, I'm not quite sure on that one. Uh, I okay. I just figure they haven't they haven't told me that kind of stuff. Cool. Yeah. No yeah. worries. And then um, the other question I had was about some of the partnerships. It looks like both teams are <laughs> sharing equipment sponsors. Like, because sometimes like with the Legion teams, they all have separate equipment sponsors. So part mm -hmm. of a part of what we were wondering was whether the teams will have different sponsors and different equipment. It looks like from the team camp photos, they have the same equipment. Do you kind of want to dive into what the NCL teams will be riding this year? Um, so some of the equipment is going to be the same. Some of it's different. Um, we are owned by the NCL, um, but there is no connection between the teams. Uh, there's no like working together. We don't like have any group messages, anything like that. Um, and so a lot of the equipment is going to be the same or similar just because, you know, for the management, I figure that's probably easiest. I know we're on the same types of bikes. Um, they're on POC helmets. We're on uh, Rudy project. Uh, so okay. they're going to be like that. Um, okay. but yeah. So it's what... good that you're on different helmets. Cause that'll make it easier to like pick out each team. Yeah. And, uh, well the, the Denver team is, their kits are super dark. It's black with like the brown gold mountain geometric things. And then the Miami, um, the Miami jerseys are actually lighter than they look on social media. Um, they're okay. pretty bright blue. And then the race jerseys that we have are pink on the sleeve. Um, and then there's like pink in the cityscape, all that kind of stuff. This actually, this t-shirt with the uh, green outline, the neon blue right here is uh like the logo that we have on the socks all that kind of stuff um but yeah so we're, we're pretty we're super easy to pick out in the field that's awesome okay perfect so what what equipment is miami knights going to be using at races like what i'm giving you a time to like do all your sponsor plugs like what what equipment are we using here um so in terms of uh, sponsor sponsor plugs, you know the the people who are supporting us, we are going to be on the uh, Wahoo Speedplay Power Pedals. Um, those yeah. are a big part of uh, that's a big part of the program. In terms of equipment sponsor and Wahoo, in terms of the the metaverse and all that kind of stuff, we're trying to be big on that sort of progressive technology. Um, we're on Factor Bikes. I don't know if I need to be plugging them or not. Um, I'm not sure if they're a full sponsor, or just somebody that we happen to be using. Um, the We're going to be on Rudy Project Sunglasses. We are getting Bont uh, shoes. The Bont shoes are super cool. We all get two pairs. Um, they're, yeah, great shoes. Um, definitely have to bake them first, though, if you have any sort of weirdly shaped <laughs> Um on all sorts of different different um, like white label clothing right now. Um, I'm not sure if it's from the same place or if it's from separate places. Um, okay. And then, 
let me think. We're sponsored by Vision, um, like Vision Metron for wheels, handlebars, all that kind of stuff. Um, nice. And then Wahoo gives us, we're on the Rome bike computer, um, which is an interesting choice, you know. I, I would have thought the Bolt would have been the choice for us. Um, but they must think that the Rome is a better computer. Just, you know, they, they want some publicity on that. Um, it's, it's a great computer. It's still arrow, all that kind of stuff. It's got a big screen. It's going to be great for, uh, you know, full gas racing. You don't have to look quite as hard as the little screen. Um, yeah, that's the bigger one, right? That's the, like the bolt is yeah. the small one and the Rome is the big one. Yeah. Rome, the Rome is the big one, um, with the, the dual band, gps stuff and all that so it's super accurate um we're on the the wahoo like i think we even get like the speed sensors we get the heart rate sensor all that kind of stuff um sweet going yeah. with the roam sounds like it kind of squares with the like data uh the focus on data and stuff and i mean who <laughs> knows maybe they'll put your points on your head unit or something down the road you know it would be pretty cool um but i don't know i don't know we have the capability to be that right now. Yeah, I, I expect that that's beyond what you would possibly know right now. All right, I've got my last of the like questions you may not know or, <laughs> or be able to answer, and then I'm going to come back to one that you definitely can. Uh, so can, can you say anything about the like how the team – we're talking about sponsors and stuff. You don't have like a traditional uh, – title sponsor that is like a brand that's paying in or whatever. Do you know anything about like the financial model of the league in a sense of like, you know, generally the title sponsor would be who the majority of your money is coming from. I know NCL has raised a bunch of investor capital, but um, yeah, I, can you, can you elaborate on any of that anymore? I've been curious uh, as to how that might work. I can't get super specific with it. Um, one, because that's, you know, private information. And two, because I'm not in the administration. I just ride my bike. Uh, yeah. But I know. I kind of figured that was over yeah. your head. So yeah, <laughs> I had to uh, ask. Some of it is investor capital. We do have um, some large corporations uh, that are investors. Um, and a lot of the first season is trying to to bring this league to fruition so that we can get um like stable financial planning for all of it or financial like support um for the league. and so because i know there's been a lot of talk about like oh what's the sustainability of uh of the league all that kind of stuff like where are you guys it's it's being taken care of i can't like yeah. you know um but it's sure. uh, solid yeah. If I didn't thing, ask, everybody on Reddit would have roasted me, so I had to throw it out there. Yeah. No. One thing being kind of like a, a business interest guy is like knowing like how they want to be sustainable and just seeing that there's a definitive model um, that's inspiring to see versus the typical cycling like Lotto is going to give $2 million to whoever and maybe if it's there next year or not. Um, so yeah. it's, a, it's nice to see that there's a there's a longevity piece of it and they're not just thinking short term. Uh, so it's, that's great to hear. Yeah. We yeah. talked a lot last week about stage racing in America and about how it's just going away because it's so, um, you know, economically unsustainable to be putting on like tour of Colorado level tour of Utah level, even some of the smaller stage races that are going away. So I, all of the steps I'm seeing, do make a lot of sense from that perspective. Like crits are more contained. They're going to big markets where they can get a lot of people to these things. Like uh, there, there are certainly some pieces of it that make a lot of sense to me. So that's cool. And that leads me into my next question, which is I, I've got y'all schedule in front of me, but you know, you're doing a lot of races outside of the NCL stuff. So sounds like you did a big winter. Are you like gunning for, Joe Martin, some of these longer like stage racy type things, or what are you going to do outside of the NCL races? What are you excited about? Um, well, the, the number one priority for us is the NCL races. Obviously. Um, I personally, I, you know, I love a good stage race, so I am excited to be able to do Joe Martin. Um, I'm bummed to be missing Redlands, uh, for the Miami team, but we are doing some like special VIP events after the Miami race. 
uh, in April. So, you know, it's it, it has to happen, and uh, we're going to be doing super fun stuff down in Miami instead. Um, in terms of the, the other races, I'm super excited for, uh, for Speed Week. We're doing some of those races, uh, especially Athens. Um, oh, yeah. You know, we have a, oh, yeah. a former winner, a couple of former winners. I think Frank won uh, Twilight at some point. He sure uh, did. Yeah, I know that I know that Brian Gomez did, um, and you know, as a UGA alumni myself, uh, it would be super cool, super super cool to be part of a winning team in uh, in Athens. Um, you know, they're going back to the old course. That's what we've heard. Yeah, like I they're heard done with the hill. The the hill. Yeah, I love a I love a good hill and a crit. Uh, I don't always have you know the the speed. I'm not the biggest rider, but you make it you make it hard, and I can absolutely. I can absolutely make something happen. Um, but yeah, I need to go and look fully at the, at the, um, the calendar. I know we're doing a lot of the big crit stuff, a lot of the, uh, ACC stuff we plan on doing, like, I think we're doing pro nationals, um, yep. which is always, exciting. you know, Knoxville is a great revenue, uh, a great spot for it. Iconic. Uh, yeah, they they Knoxville always put a kind of court great, too. Um, so I'm super excited for that. But yeah, I think it's going to be a great calendar. Um, something that a lot of a lot of people were saying about the NCL was, you know, oh these riders are, you know, they they can, um, they they all they have to do is race four races in the year, and so you know that's <laughs> not the rest of us. Because, and that's not what we're doing, you know. Everybody in the NCL is in the NCL because we, we love bike racing. Um, and we love this new type of bike racing, but we're going to race as much as we can. You know, it's just, it's something that we love yeah. to do. So. so, yeah, the first thing I said to Jonathan when I saw the schedule was like, holy crap, this is a ton of racing. Yeah. It's, like, it's so, it's awesome to see, like, we're not just going to see NCL teams at NCL. We're going to see them at all the cool stage races, all the big crits. So it's exciting to see just like, big teams like just it's going to be so fun to watch so we got into this in the green room a little bit before we started recording but some of these races at least uh it's safe to assume you're probably going to be overlapping with legion a little bit and uh that's been the question of of the moment for the past couple of years is like how do you beat legion so uh, we we were talking about how you know you guys have have a squad that can do it. You want to expound on that a little bit? Um, we just we race our bikes to win. We have a team of of winners. Um, so we will be doing our best to uh to cross the line first. No matter who we're racing, it doesn't really matter to us. Um, so f- who you are, for the listeners, yeah. uh. You guys do have uh, Clever Martinez, who I've said on this channel many times, is like kind of been the best at um, like infiltrating the Legion lead out team, lead out in the pa- in the last few laps, especially uh, I believe it was the Crybaby Hill Day of Tulsa, like twenty one. He just got right in the middle of the of the train, and then you know he was on Blazers last year. So not that there was necessarily collusion, but um you know you're you're a little bit less inclined to chop somebody who's who's like you know essentially your boss to some degree so i'm really interested yeah. interested to see now that uh you guys have put a lot of these strong riders together like clever and frank and yourself people who who were kind of spread out before you're all all together and maybe we'll see a little bit more like even racing in some of these big big races this year yeah um yeah no i even you know our our racers are super strong super experienced um it's gonna be gonna be great to race them and then our our management is also very very experienced you know we have bastion alexander as our uh, as our head coach um at the miami knights he used to work with the uh, uhc a couple other teams um so he knows what he's doing he knows exactly how to how to win a race um so it will be super exciting to to line up against some of these guys yeah so you've got you've got uh some management from uhc and then you've also got johnny clark formerly uh on uhc so 
like <laughs> I, I've a lot of people, myself included, have made the the comparison, like what Legion has been doing recent in recent years to the blue train that we used to see UHC doing. So, you know, now you guys actually have some of the blue train. So, yeah, maybe we'll see somebody who can uh, who can go toe to toe with them. It'll definitely be interesting to watch all yeah. all of this no. stuff this season. If nothing else, it'll it'll just be exciting to uh to shake it up. You know, the the tour was never that fun to watch when you keep the guy was just going to get the lead it for fifteen days. Um so we just we're we're gonna make it exciting. If yeah, if that's my good to hear. Have, have two things, it's it's firepower and uh and personality. I think we're gonna be a great team to root for. Um and we're gonna race in a really exciting way. So yeah, I was going to say with the Miami team with like Clever and Johnny and Frank and like all those guys, you have like half the the US Pro Peloton personalities like on the on the same team. Like y'all are it's going to be fun to watch just everybody just Yeah. Like, Cuz all, all the guys who are lighting up the races are going yeah. on the same team now. No, on and on and off the bikes, um everyone is a super good time to uh to be um, you know, involved with, it's not going to be dull. Um, we're, I don't know. It's just a great group of group of guys to, to be teammates with, you know? Um, but yeah, there, there's a lot of call. Awesome. Well, I I feel like that's probably a good place to leave it. You got anything, uh, uh, social media you want to plug anything like that? You want people to, where, where can people find you follow your season? Well, so for, for me personally, you know, on Instagram, I'm, I'm Gabe J. Mendez, no space, no underscore. Um, and then NCL Racing is uh, NCL Racing on Instagram. And the Knights are the uh, NCL Knights CC Cycling Club. Um, none of those have any sort of underscore anything. So uh, there is going to be a, a big push for good social media presence, all that kind of stuff. Um, it would be if you're if you're trying to find out stuff about the league and all that i would definitely give myself all the riders the uh, organization um a follow um and there's going to be all sorts of fun stuff on there uh all the information about the the race dates all that will be on on instagram at least cool and we will definitely be following the season on this podcast we'll be we'll have our eyes peeled for you we'll we'll probably see you at uh sunny king and uh what else are we gonna do, Ben? Uh, oh, you'll be Twilight, Twi- all, most of Speed Week, Sunny King. Yeah. Well, we're we're planning on being at the NCL Atlanta race. Um, yeah, can say that for sure. Um, yeah, we're, yeah. We'll so just see you. Like, we always see you all over the place. So I'm, yeah, we'll be running into each other. We'll see you yeah. out there. Um, thanks for coming on the podcast. Uh, for all the listeners, we'll be back on like a normal episode next week hopefully we can like digest some of this and then like talk about what we think it it means for the season and we'll get more into tucson also we'll talk through the results and like full breakdown of all that sure there'll be more more racing between now and then too but gabe thanks for coming on yeah and uh see you guys later appreciate it